The Lord be with you. Thank you for joining us here at Christ our Savior Lutheran Church in Holland, Michigan for the whole counsel of God, word, and prayer on this first day of October. We continue in 1 Timothy. 1 Timothy, today we will have the third chapter. So let's hear God's word together and pray. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Speak, Lord, for your servant here. Please show me now your ways, that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of our own that comes from faith, from the law, but that which comes through faith in Christ. Your word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. Give us life, O Lord, according to your word, and we shall declare your greatness. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 1 Timothy, the third chapter, verses 1 through 7, entitled, Qualifications for Overseers. The saying is trustworthy. If anyone aspires to the office of overseer, he desires a noble task. Therefore, an overseer must be above reproach, the husband of one wife, sober-minded, self-controlled, respectable, hospitable, able to teach, not a drunkard, not violent, but gentle, not quarrelsome, not a lover of money. He must manage his own household well with all dignity, keeping his children submissive. But if, for if someone does not know how to manage his own household, how will he care for God's church? He must not be a recent convert, or he may become puffed up with conceit and fall into condemnation of the devil. Moreover, he must be well thought of by outsiders so that he may not fall into disgrace, into the snare of the devil. So far the word. Only qualified men may serve as pastors of God's flock. We should honor and uphold the qualifications that God has set forth for those who would serve in the office of public ministry. Always remembering that the pastoral office is a divine institution, a gift from God for his church. The Lord Jesus has given this office and its qualifications because he loves us and because he always desires what is best for us. He himself, God himself, is our chief shepherd. He has laid down his life for us and he gives us his eternal life. He gives us the eternal life. We pray, Almighty God, in your kindness, you cause the light of the gospel to shine among us. By the working of your Holy Spirit, help us to share the good news of your salvation, that all who hear it may rejoice in the gift of your unending love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We continue now, verses 8 through 13, qualifications for deacons. Deacons, likewise, must be dignified, not double-tongued, not addicted to much wine, not greedy for dishonest gain. They must hold the mystery of the faith with a clear conscience, and let them also be tested first. Then let them serve as deacons if they prove themselves blameless. Their wives, likewise, must be dignified, not slanderers, but sober-minded, faithful in all things. Let deacons each be the husband of one wife, managing their children and their own households well. For those who serve well as deacons gain a good standing for themselves and also great confidence in the faith that is in Christ Jesus. So far the word. Deacons and deaconesses were faithful people entrusted with special responsibilities for service to their fellow Christians. Christians today are also privileged to serve others through special congregational offices and service organizations. When given chances to express Jesus' love in deeds of service, it is easy to pass on these opportunities, but in truth, God calls every Christian to follow his example of self-giving service. Jesus came to serve sinners like us with his forgiveness and salvation. He still serves us today through the means of grace. We pray. O Lord Jesus, as you so wonderfully serve us with the rich treasures of your redeeming grace, inspire us by that truth and that grace joyfully to serve others in your precious name. In your name we pray. Amen. And now verses 14 through 16, the mystery of godliness. I hope to come to you soon. But I am writing these things to you so that if I delay, you may know how one ought to behave in the household of God, which is the church of the living God, a pillar and buttress of the truth. Great indeed, we confess, is the mystery of godliness. He was manifested in the flesh, vindicated by the Spirit, seen by angels, proclaimed among the nations, believed on in the world, taken up in glory. So far the word. This concludes the section dedicated to the church's organization. 
We are not free to amend or depart from God's revealed will concerning the outward organization of His church because it is the pillar and buttress of the truth. The church of the living God that confesses the gospel of Jesus Christ in this fallen world. In love, God has made us members of his church by the Holy Spirit, by grace. The Savior's truth has been made manifest to us, and through faith we will follow him into glory. We pray. Almighty and gracious Lord, pour out your Holy Spirit on your faithful people. Keep us steadfast in your grace and truth. Protect and deliver us in times of temptation. Defend us against all enemies, and grant to your church your saving peace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We continue in prayer now on the first day of the month. We give thanks to God for his gifts of word and sacrament, that through these means, these means of grace, God freely gives his grace to sinners by faith. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. O merciful Father, you have wounded your own Son to bring us the eternal healing of your love. Bless the sick and those who suffer, those wounded in body or mind, and those dying, and all those we now name to you in our hearts. As well as Art and Rick and Melissa, Clifford, Helen, Mary Ann, Jane, George, Brina, Marilyn, and Chris. In your own time, grant to them healing according to your will and sustain them into the day of the resurrection of the body. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these things, O Lord, and whatever else that you know we need, we pray you to grant us for the sake of the mercies and by the merits of our Savior, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and he sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. <laughs>